back to this minus to 12 malarkey and I was watching a number of our video of Anthony Padilla of the Nottingham University talking about the theta function regularization and um, how we can just add in a weighting function to the um, the infinite series and there get minus 12 out of it somehow and um, this is like building on Der Derrance Tao's work and um, yeah I I don't agree with it still and I still think that physics has a big problem with infinity where it needn't have a big problem with infinity I really don't think it always has a big problem with infinity at all um, I think our latest cosmological observations are going to point to the fact ultimately that there are things outside what we consider to be our universe or um, our observable universe I think there's um, very good reasons um, for thinking that the universe is far larger at least than we currently suspect it is and you know what? I don't really have much of a problem with thinking that the universe is infinite to an extent and that um, our big bang that we had 13.8 billion years ago that was just um, the collapsing of the universe way in the past um, to to down into singularities and then to, and thence to expand again into the universe that we observe today and um, I don't think there's any problem with singularities either. I don't think that there's any problem with having points of infinite density. And so like, when it comes to the infinities in quantum field theory calculations, I mean, is, is that what you're really trying to eliminate from quantum field theory calculations, things such as singularities? Well, I would expect singularities to exist in quantum field theory calculations for all sorts of reasons that I do. I mean, then again, I'm one of these weird people who believe that the Higgs boson detection event was a naked singularity, not the detection of a new particle. I think um, the two protons collided with one another, formed a naked singularity, and decayed into two, into two gamma ray pro protons. And um, that's, I think, a more tenable idea, really, than a new particle having been created or some god particle or whatever that um you know gives mass to matter whereas really i think what's giving mass to matter is just other matter the the matter in its surroundings so you know the, i mean the, this cup for example gains matter because it's it's in a gravitational field gains mass rather because it's in a gravitational field i consider gravitational fields to be composed of tunneling background particles, electrons, which interact with the protons in the cup and pull the cup down towards the surface of the Earth. Um, yeah, I, I don't have any problems with infinity in calculations, and I, well, yeah, I guess that's a, that's a huge problem in, in physics. And um, Padilla saying that uh, Feynman said Oh, we just swept the infinities under the rug in this um, uh, non perturbative renormalization of the, the, the field theories and what have you. Like, what? Well, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't just sweep something under the rug. And what Padilla did in that video based on Terence Tao's work, like, yeah, that is just sweeping something under the rug, really. Or it is, it is just yet more trickery, I'm sorry to say. It's just adding in a weighting function so that you get away from the original series, which is 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6, so on to infinity, all added up. But what does that equal? Infinity. I'm sorry to say. Otherwise, you have to undermine the basic laws of arithmetic. You, there's another way of proving it. I've got one proof that it is equal to infinity out online somewhere. I um, This is how you go about proving it. You take the sets, right, of um, 0 plus 1, then 0 plus 1 plus 2, 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3, set theory it. Like, you get finite numbers. However, add all the sets together. What do you get then? What's the set? What's the sum of the sets added together? Infinity. That's the proof that it's equal to infinity. There's a much more elegant proof than wh whatever that is. <laughs> whatever like that load of rubbish is that he was talking about. And it is a load of rubbish, unfortunately. It is. It's just nonsense. It's, um, you know, they get into this, um, oh, but it's too sharp a cutoff. You can do it more gently and... and, 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 and and you can add in this um, 
this other little function or adding a cause or something. And yeah, string theory is full of this sort of shit, I'm sorry to say, and it's a sort of bullshit. Nothing more than that, just utter rubbish. I think it's, it's perfectly plausible that the universe is infinite in extent. If it weren't infinite in extent, what would be outside the universe? And also, he said something else. He said, like, ev like people don't have a good intuition for what infinity is. I don't have a very good intuition for what infinity is. That's just something that's not not finite. The basic mathematical intuition for what infinity is is, is from the circle, of course. Well, it's, a, it's a shape with an infinite number of sides. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, like... Most people on the street would agree with you on that. Are you, like, looking down on ordinary people and our mathematical abilities? And our levels of mathematical intuition? Like, ultimately, it's your work that has to be make things explicable to the public. Not just to yourselves. Not really. And you, it has to make sense to ordinary people as well, as well as you. And it has to make sense to other members of your community as well. And... String theory that makes barely any sense to anyone. Quantum theory makes barely any sense to anyone. General relativity makes more sense to more people, I think, within general kind of nerddom, but it's incomplete. Um, yeah, and then you got uh, entities in classical physics, such as Newton's laws of motion and things, and I think that makes sense to most people if you were to give a reasonably good explanation of of it. But oh, no, the infinite series of one plus two plus three plus four plus five etc. is not equal to minus a twelve. You can massage it and stretch it and squeeze it and modify it and change it, as in waiting functions to your heart's content. It is still equal to infinity. You've just changed what you're doing. You've just decided to count up a different set of numbers. That's all you've done. It's, it's not impressive, particularly. It's just... It's chicanery. You've just chicaned your way around the central problem, which is you made the claim that that infinite series is equal to minus a 12, when it, it isn't. It, it just is not. And infinities can exist in nature. I mean, didn't Penrose get the Nobel Prize for um, proving the existence of singularities in nature? I expect, like, once we acknowledge that the Higgs boson detection was a naked singularity, we'll be able to realise that like, there are naked singularities all over the place, and that they're quite easy to create. <laughs> Or quite easy to create now by our standards of technological sophistication with particle accelerators and so on. And I think in the background with tunneling electrons causing the gravitational field, like those are naked singularities also. That um, a point of you know, and we can have infinitesimals again. And uh, photons collapse the electron into an, an infinitesimally well point an infinitesimal point of space creates a point of infinite density very br very briefly pops up in some of the other parts of the universe and deposits a photon again and quantum tunnels. And, you know, that's that's brought about due to the uncertainty principle. The, you know, well, knowing the particle's location with too much precision and accuracy um, augments its momentum. So, well, yeah, to superluminal speeds and then it quantum tunnels pops up somewhere else. Well, it's a photon, so we still have that from quantum mechanics, and um, yeah, there's minus the 12 nonsense, nonsense, load of nonsense it is.